Hi everyone, Joy here. As you guys know, I've started this podcast to inspire entrepreneurs to start their entrepreneurial journey. And today I have an absolutely fantastic lady. Her name is Grace and she is coming to us um, with her inspiring stories and also how she can potentially help people. Are you thinking of becoming an entrepreneur, but you're not exactly sure if that is for you? Or you have tried a few times, but you have failed? Or maybe you are currently on your journey, but you're not exactly sure you're taking the right path and if you're doing the right things. Follow along on this podcast where I will be sharing my entrepreneurial journey with you all. I will be sharing my successes, my failures, and also my challenges. The best part is I will also be interviewing fellow entrepreneurs that will be sharing their stories and their successes. This is my podcast, Entrepreneurial Journey, and I am Joy Nicholson. Hello, how are you doing, Grace? Hello, not too bad. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous, thank you. So tell people a little bit about yourself. You know, where did you grow up? Where are you from? Right. So originally I'm from Hong Kong. My parents are immigrants from Hong Kong. They feared the 1997 handover from Hong Kong to China. So they decided to immigrate to Canada, which is where I am now. I'm in Vancouver, Canada right now on the West Coast. And this is where I've been living for the past 15 years. So I consider myself a local, even though I didn't grow up here. (laughs) I grew up, yeah, I grew up in partially between Hong Kong and Canada though, but I spent high school in a small rural village in rural Manitoba, which is like the prairie provinces in central Canada. When I was adopted, they raised me in high school there at that village. And so my my growing up and my youth and adolescence has been quite all over the place. <laughs> That's so awesome though. Uh, so what is your, what's your favorite ho- hobbies? What do you like to do as a pastime? I definitely love traveling. It's an expensive pastime indeed, but I love the thing about traveling that I love a lot is to meet people who have such different perspectives and stories and life experiences than me. I just love immersing in myself into their stories and learning about their way of life, how they do things, how they see things and just their perspective. And I just like you know, learning their languages, um, learning, you know, immersing in their, in their food and in, in their, in their daily life. And that's why I love traveling so much. Now, there's this thing that says that when you're passionate about, if you, if you don't know your passion and you don't really know what you're passionate about, you should travel. And, you know, sometimes (laughs) traveling helps you to figure out your purpose in life. Do you think this is true? I think it, it, well, see, the thing, thing is, I didn't always, I couldn't always afford traveling. Yes. But when I did, and I started to get outside of that, of, of that echo chamber, you know, that echo chamber we have, when I started to get outside that, it really started to expand my own perspectives. And that's when I started to let go of some of the beliefs and some of the, uh, some of the things that were, that were holding me back, the self imposed limitations I had when I got out there my world expanded not just not just my my footprint in the world but my whole world expanded internally and externally so that's definitely one way where we can challenge ourselves to be better people is by traveling and I guess some people do the eat pray love thing as well where they use travel to get some clarity on what they want to do and what's important to them that could definitely happen, but it takes some form, of course, outside of traveling, it does take some form of self introspection. That is so awesome. I never thought of traveling being like that. (laughs) (laughs) What's the, okay, now let's get to the entrepreneurial questions. What is the very first business that you've tried? Uh, It would be this one. Oh, wow. That's so awesome. Yep. It would be this one, you know, I, to be honest, Joy, I didn't always believe that I was cut out for being an entrepreneur. I didn't always believe any for the longest time. I I felt that while I went to college, I did the whole traditional university graduate, uh, you know, career track. And I thought that, well, I was destined to work for someone else because I went to college. That's all I know how to do. I don't know anything about business and my, and my college education, I didn't do an MBA. I didn't do any courses on commerce or economy. So that's how I believed for a long time that I didn't have what it takes. What made you, what was that stepping stone that like let you take the step that you've, you know, like that buck that bit you, that entrepreneurial buck that bit you, what was that, you know, what was that thing that got you to become an entrepreneur? Well, I can't say that it was any one thing, but over the course of my whole career and my life experiences, I've had this pulling, this calling 
to help the masses, to help people, to go out there and spread my message because of my story. I have a very unique and powerful story. So I've always had this calling and it was never satisfied in employment, even in gainful employment with another company. I found it was never satisfying, but I just didn't know why. Yeah. And so over the years of misery, hating, job hopping, you know, feeling depressed and burnt out, you know, that cycle that, that I went through, that's where I, I, it was stronger and stronger for me that I needed to get my message out there. I needed to be an entrepreneur. I needed to make a business and a global mass movement. And that's when I took that leap. I quit my last job and I took that leap. Wow, that is amazing. Do you, can I put you on the spot? Do you mind sharing your story with people? No, absolutely not. Yeah. When I was, okay, so when I was born, my parents were afraid of that 1997 handover. So mm-hmm. I was actually born right here in Vancouver, Canada. They wanted me, my mom, actually, I don't know about my father, but my mother wanted to me, wanted me to have a Canadian passport. They wanted me to have automatic citizenship because they felt that it was the land of milk and honey the land of riches and that that canadian passport could be like the gateway to the world they didn't want me to have a hong kong citizenship at all so they they had me in vancouver and then they took me back to hong kong okay and, but what happened was later on they did make their way back to canada but unfortunately my mom passed away when i was eight years old and so shortly after that, you know, my, my, my father, he remarried, you know, he remarried and he had kids from that second marriage and he didn't really, he didn't want to continue our relationship with me. You know, and I, and I, I can't understand why I, I can't pretend to understand why, but he didn't want to have a relationship with me. So I had to leave the home and that's when I was completely fending for myself. I was in survival mode, needing to provide for myself and desperate you know suicidal even and not I couldn't see my own future and this went on for quite a few years until I was 14 when this older couple discovered me and they adopted me right there on the spot they it was it literally went like this Grace you need a place to stay why don't you come live with us wow I'm getting goosebumps that is (laughs) and I followed them home and you know it was quite dangerous at that time I was 14 but you know, I, I didn't have any parental guidance or support. So I didn't, I, I, at 14, I didn't have a lot of wisdom to me and I, I didn't have any parents, you know, telling me what I should do or shouldn't do. I didn't have that at all. So I just followed them home and it was a dangerous decision, but I was very much desperate for surviving, yes. but it worked out well. It worked out well. It turns out they, they are some of the most sincere philanthropic people in the world and to this day, their contributions have really changed the country of Uganda where they're from. That is amazing. Wow, what a heartfelt story. <laughs> no wonder you need to share that with the world. It's such an amazing story. And look at where you are now. You're super successful. Um, you're inspiring so many thousands of people. That is such an amazing story. <laughs> I, you know, it was, that was my second chance. I mean, my adoptive parents, when they came into my life, I knew that was my second chance. And I knew that I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to make a meaningful contribution in the world. And I wouldn't have felt that way. I didn't feel that way at all before meeting them. You know, I just wanted it all to end. I just didn't yeah. feel that I was wanted. You know, I was the abandoned child. Yeah. And usually people want to adopt young children. Mm. So by the time when I was 14, I was really, I was already feeling hopeless. Yeah, wow. I'm completely alone. And that's, so, as a teenager, that's a really, really bad space to be in because already you struggle with, as a teenager, with so many different emotions and to put that massive weight on top of you, that must have been so, so hard for you. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was difficult uh, beyond any, you know, vocabulary or words that I can put it, I, I, but I still remember it. I remember it very well. Very, yeah, I remember it very well, what I had gone through. But, um, you know, when they adopted me, I still couldn't accept their generosity because I didn't trust it. You know, I didn't trust it. And I, and I felt that, well, I'm going to be abandoned again. You know, but the po- turning point for me was when I was 16. Two years of testing their sincerity. At 16 was the first time I had that moment of agency. You know, ag- as they describe in psychology, psychology, agency is when you 
when you really take ownership of your responsibility and your life, you know, is when you realize you have a choice. And my moment of agency happened when I was 16, when I realized that I am provided for, they really do love me and they, they are the real deal. And so I, I made a decision for myself, a decision, cutting off all choices, a decision that I was going to be responsible. I needed to be for the rest of my life. And no one's going to provide for me. No one's going to pay for my education. But I decided that my education was going to be my ticket to freedom and independence. And so that was my, that was my mission back then at 16. What made you decide that education was the way to go? I, was, I didn't know any other way. You know, you're taught growing up and even now, you know, children are taught to do well in school, to excel in school because we're, we're taught and it's, we're conditioned to believe that a good education leads to a good job and a good salary, right? And so I, I'm the same way. I mean, that was the only way I knew was to excel in school, get a good job, get a good salary. And I knew no other way. So that's how I decided at 16. I thought that was the only way. Wow. And, and when did you decide, okay, so obviously 16 was a big change in your life for you. Is that when you decided that you want to start your own business that, uh, did it inspire from there or when, when basically did it start in your life that you decided that you want to take that leap of faith into business? Well, no, I, I, you know, at 16, I didn't even know that starting a business was even a choice. Oh, wow. You know? I didn't have that level of self-awareness or wisdom, you know, or, or life experience even. <laughs> I was, you know, and, and, and my image of myself, you know, the way I viewed myself wasn't definitely was not as mature or self-aware as I am now. But when bu business became an option, when I knew about it was during college, you know, because you meet people who are, are, who tell me, oh, I'm doing an MBA. You know, I am studying uh, commerce or you go, oh, this is the school of business. And then that's how yeah. my first awareness of, oh, I see you can study to be a business owner. Right. But of course, at that time, the, the idea of business was so limited to me. You know, you, I'm like 19, 20, 21 years old. And for me, my concept of business was only a brick and mortar business. Yes. That was my only concept of business. Wow. Is you set up shop somewhere else and you have a counter of products. That was my only concept of business. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of the first thing that pops in anybody's head, I think, when you have no clue. <laughs> it's like you've got a physical shop somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. But of course, you know, fast forward till now, I mean, I, I, it's, it's endless. I mean, a business you know, just simply means you're adding value in this world. That means it simply means that you are solving important life problems, important business problems, and helping people along the way. You know, transforming an aspect of their life or an aspect of their of their well being, and that is a business, an ethical business, for that matter, right? And that wasn't an option to me until you know more recent years. You know, after my during my PhD, when I was doing my PhD, that's when I started to have this tug that I was meant for something more. That's right? But I didn't have the clarity. I didn't have the clarity and I didn't know that, you know, I didn't feel that I had what it takes, as I mentioned earlier, because <laughs> I was like, well, I'm a PhD. PhD is what you do. What all PhDs do is become professors. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want it. And I yeah. didn't know why. Well, obviously we were meant for greater, better things. What do, you, what do you contribute to your success? What is the thing that you feel makes you successful? How do you define success? Being happy in yourself, be happy in your career, actually making a living out of, you know, not working for a boss, just doing your own thing. What do you feel like your, I mean, you, as you know, success is not just about money. It's about actually having a free, happy life. And obviously that depends on who you are as a person. So what is your exact, you know, what do you feel like you contribute to your success? Okay. So if success, if we're talking about success as in creating an inspired and fulfilling life, if that is success, I think that the, the, what probably the biggest thing that contributed to that being successful, creating inspiration and fulfillment in my life is to have, is having that level of self-awareness, knowing myself and knowing what my true purpose is, right? When you, when you, when you pursue meaning, when you have meaningful pursuits, that is what 
sensual state. It's not a fleeting desire. It's not a passion, which is fleeting. It is a true purpose. It is what I was meant to be, what I was meant to be doing. And why, and the reason why I had to go through all of those challenges and obstacles in my life, right? So that is the biggest thing that contributed to that success. But of course, for your listeners who are thinking, well, what about making money? If that is the definition of success, how did I become successful in that way in terms of financial stability, financial confidence in my business? Yeah. That would be understanding business systems, understanding scaling business, understanding how to grow a business and being realistic through and through yes. on you know, the, 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 the benefits and the pitfalls of yeah. being a business owner. <laughs> Because it's not an easy journey. <laughs> not an easy journey, exactly. So that that would I would answer it that way. It depends on what the success is. I would attribute to different things. Yes, and success means different to everybody else. You know, for me, success is just having the financial freedom to not work for a boss. I'm happy with that. I don't care about making millions, but you know, everybody is different. Some people want to make millions. That makes them happy. You know, it's, it really all depends on a person. That's a big thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm respectful of everybody's definition exactly. of success. In exactly. fact, I, yeah. In fact, in my work, I do empower people to define their own success in their own terms. That's beautiful. That is so true because everybody has a different view on it. That's a big thing. What are you currently working on? What is your, your big thing that you're working on at the moment that you can tell people about? Yeah, absolutely. I am working on a, this, uh, it's, it's, um, how do I describe it? It's a multimedia training, you know, multimedia meaning it's in part an online university. So I have my own online university. It is in part coaching. It is a part accountability and it is in part implementation. And it's, it's this, it's this all encompassing career revisionist intensive. So it's like a career intensive yeah. where they come and they come into, they come into and they work with me and together we build this career path this inspired career path, you know, and it's like being, and, and, and that's how I show people, I coach people, I teach them how to become masters and designers of their own destiny. That's amazing. That is so, so awesome. And that must be so fulfilling because you can actually see people succeeding in something that they really want to do and not just something that they decided they're going to make money in. Yes, absolutely. And the beautiful part of it is making money is the side effect. Yes. That is so awesome. I love that. I love that. I'm all about finding your passion and finding something that you love to do because finding your passion is a big stretch because sometimes people don't know what they're passionate about. And it's sometimes your passion finds you, you don't find your passion. And that I'm talking out of experience because that's kind of what happened to me. But sometimes you just want to do something that you love to do. You don't want to just, you know, get a normal, I don't know, job on the internet or selling a product that you don't like to do, but people do that just to make money. So what you do is so fulfilling. That is so awesome. Thank you. Uh, so a little bit of a statement, a little bit of a, a question. If you can um, give advice to people sitting on the fence of wanting to become an entrepreneur, but they're not exactly sure if they should do it. Do you have any advice for them? I would say that it's important that you ask the right questions. And the, and the question isn't around, should I do it? Because once you say should, it becomes someone else's value and not your own but rather looking at what are your highest values, right? And does a biz the concept of starting a business, is that going to satisfy your highest value? Because, you know, being realistic about what is entailed in a business owner, what is all, what is involved in running a business, growing a business, scaling a business, getting, you know, attracting customers, retaining customers, all of those things are those activities in line with your highest value? And if they are, then that's wonderful. If they aren't, or if some of them are, then that's where you have to ask important questions in terms of deciding whether or not it's the right fit. Because I'm, I am a firm believer that when you ask a different question, you always get a different outcome. So asking the right questions to yourself to get to, to move yourself towards the outcome that you want, which is clarity, that is what I would say is the, is the most important step. Wow. That's amazing advice. I absolutely just love that. That is so awesome. <laughs> really great. So um, one little last question. Do you, what do you think is your driving factor to keep yourself going every day? What drives you? 
I know my reason, my why, you know, I, I really know my why. And, and I truly do think that your reasons have to come first, you know, and then your results come after that. Yes. Yeah. You don't get results first without knowing your reason, you know, your reason first, and that's your true reason outside any outside influence, external factors, anything of that it is your in and of, at the end of the day, it is truly your reason. Then your results can truly come. So I'm, I'm, I'm completely aligned in my purpose and in my life mission and just knowing my reason for doing this. And it's a reason that's bigger than myself. And that's what helps me to weather the storm of challenges that I inevitably will face as I'm just trying to grow my business and reach out and have the reach I want and the contribution I want in this world. That is amazing. That is so awesome. Did you have any struggles on your journey? Like, you know, with your business, what was your biggest challenges? Because sometimes people think it's like, I'm starting an online business. Let's just go, you know, it's easy. Um, and I mean, you should know, I should, I know it's, it's really hard when you're on that journey, then all these little things happen. That's challenges along the way. And you don't realize you don't factor them in when you start out. What was your biggest challenge? or challenges, little challenges along the way? Oh my gosh, there's so many. There's so many little things, right? But if What's I were to, ones? pardon me? The bigger challenges, if the, the little ones are too many. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the little ones are so many. I guess, the, okay, the bigger challenges, I guess it could all be summed up yes. into one phrase, right? And the phrase is that you don't know what you don't know. Oh, I like that. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. And that's the thing. I mean, I have goals. I have business goals. I have financial goals. I have lifestyle goals. And I'm hoping that my business is going to help me to establish and meet these milestones, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you reach this ceiling, right? Sometimes you reach a plateau or a ceiling or a slight decline and you get kind of concerned. And the thing is, sometimes it's not about knowledge. You know, you tried everything, you know, to fix that or to reverse that or to increase that or to accelerate that. Right. And you're at your end, the end of your knowledge, everything, you know, and yet what do I do? You know, and that's what I mean. It's the area, the realm of, you don't know what you don't know. And some, and it's two things. It's the, it's what you know, you don't know. And it's also the unknowables. Oh, okay. Yeah. So my, my challenge, my business challenge can be summed up in that, in that statement. <laughs> and, and of course, everybody has different business goals, right? Yes. For me, my goal really is to create this mass movement. It's a global movement that I'm calling career revisionist. It's, it's global reach, right? So with that, of course, comes a lot of challenges. And the bigger the goal, the bigger the challenges. Yes. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> that's amazing. Can you tell people where they can reach you, you know, to, to tap into your brain and, you know, you can help them to set up businesses where they can find your course. Uh, can you just, we'll drop links on the bottom as well, but just, you know, let people know how you can help them and, you know, obviously how they can be in touch with you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think what's easiest is my website. Uh, my, my movement is career revisionist. And the website is careerrevisionist.com. So there's two R's in the middle, careerrevisionist.com. And that is just my website. On that website, you know, people, visitors can see my podcast, my show as well. I have a YouTube channel and my social media handles are there as well. A lot of folks like to connect with me on LinkedIn and Facebook, or follow my page. I mean, it's, it's all there on that, on that website. That's awesome. That's amazing. And I will definitely, hopefully people reach out to you and, you know, find their career revision and do something in life that they really love to do. Thank you so much for your time, Grace. I really appreciate it. I had so much fun on this interview. You're such an amazing person and what you've been through and, you know, where you are now, it's such an inspiration. And I really hope that people understand and see that and it doesn't matter where they are on their path, they can become successful because you are proof of that. <laughs> I really enjoyed having being on your show. Thank you so much for having me, Joy. What you're doing is extremely important as well. Keep it up. I love your podcast and you know, listeners for your listeners, just run to Joy. I mean, go go to see her podcast. You know, go to her YouTube channel. She has an amazing energy around her. So thank you, Joy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much again. And have a great evening and um, carry on doing your content creation. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Take care. Bye.